Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. You know what? This is the most fun I've had on a video in a long time. Who are the top five worst Manchester United transfers in the last 10 years? Get in the comments because you're going to be different to me. I, I really have had fun doing it, but in a sad way, you know, like, so how I've judged this, I mean, and some would say Anana is the worst signing we've made, made. And I'm sure some of you might put Anana in there. I haven't. Spoiler alert, I haven't. But I suppose the fundamentals of the Anana deal could have maybe put there because what I've looked at really is how much we've spent on it, the impact it's had on the team, wages, what they went for, etc, etc. So with Anana, you could go, well, we had a goalkeeper that was very good. We let him go for nothing. And then we spent £50 million to replace him with somebody that's not doing very well and cost us European football. So you could do that. And there are some notable absentees in my top five that I will bring in uh, intermittently into this. But my first player I'm going to put in, and look, I'm not individualising this as well. It's not necessarily about the player. It's about the deal. So my first one is going to be in at number five it's going to be Harry Maguire now Harry Maguire signed for Manchester United for 80 million pounds he's had 129 appearances four goals and he's won a Carabao Cup the reason I put Harry Maguire in at number five and look again let me just give you a couple of other names as well potentially you could have gone with well maybe you will go with you could go with somebody like Schneiderlin Schneidlin came into Manchester United with quite a lot of hype and he was going to solve our midfield issues. Same time as Schweinsteiger, this double signing. You could say as a double signing, that was a complete and utter, you know, failure. But the reason I've got Maguire in at number five is because of the fee. The fee of £80 million for any centre-back is extraordinary. To do it, you know, what was what, four, five years ago is incredible. I mean, that would be equivalent of £100 million with inflation today. And Harry Maguire started off quite well. Um, he was given the captaincy way too soon. I think that damaged him. I think it, I think he would, he, you know, he's the sort of character that wanted it. And this season he's done okay. But for £80 million, he's done okay. Just isn't enough. And, and I think this is one of the big factors I've done with my top five. It's about the signings. It's about how much we've spent on them. It's about why we've done that. And, and you know what? Ineos should probably watch this video because they could probably learn a lot that they'll learn anyway. But my number five is Harry Maguire, just simply because to spend that amount of money, £80 million on a centre-back, and Van Dijk had gone to Liverpool not that long before that for 75. You look at what Van Dijk did to Liverpool. He was revolutionary. You look at what Maguire did to Manchester United. He was just is he any better than Lindelof? You know, it's not his fault. We're talking about transfers. The player makes the move. You can't blame him for wanting to come to United. But for me, he would be my number five. And also staying relevant as well. Here's number four. This might shock you as well. Anthony is going in at number five. Now, this will shock people because they'll be like, you like Anthony. And I do. I do like Anthony. But it's got to go in there as in my top five worst transfers of the last 10 years. Again, simply because we spent £82 million on a player that at top value was worth 50. 42 appearances, four goals, again a Carabao Cup winner. But he's not been here that long. He hasn't been here that long. And I think you've got to be careful about players that are still at the club because he can still shine. But will he ever be an £82 million player? And remember, we were linked to Ajax, Anthony in June. We didn't buy him until the end of August. That was the summer where Ten Hag had left and most of the team left. And with every player leaving, Ajax pump bumped the price up. We paid more for Martinez as well, who is definitely not in my top five, by the way. The reason I've put Anthony at number four is simply because the price was ridiculous. We got bent over by Ajax because we're rubbish at transfers. And instead of being efficient and going for a player that Ten Hag wanted when he first came to the club, we waited until the end of the transfer window, paid nearly double what he was worth, increased his wage reportedly from 20,000 to 200,000 tenfold and gave the agent God knows what. As a transfer, it's abysmal. I hope Anthony can deliver. And again, it's not his fault. But as an actual deal, terrible. Another contender that didn't make it in. I'll, I'll throw some in. We mentioned Schneiderlin before. He didn't make it in. Donny van der Beek. And I want to check the comments because your top fives are going to be very different to me. I would employ you to take your time on it. Donny van der Beek has got to go down. Maybe not in the top five, but it's another bad one. And I, can I just say as well, when doing the top five, you'll struggle to do a top 10. You'll have to miss ones out. That is horrific. 
to have so many contenders for terrible transfers over the last 10 years is a bad, bad indication of just how badly Man United have been running this area. But Donny van der Beek, a reported £39 million signing. Doesn't sound a massive amount, but what did we get for that? Next to nothing. And he's now on loan, God knows where, with no salon value, earning wages. Um, terrible, terrible. You could even say Anthony Martial. About £55 million spent on him. Wages, probably another 50 million. 100 million pounds on Anthony Martial. There were, there has been high points, but for 100 million pounds, has there been enough? I wouldn't put Martial anywhere near my top five, but it might be a consider for you. So Anthony, number four. Uh, number three, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm stuck on this. I, I'm going to do it. Okay, another winger. I'm going to put Jaden Sancho in because if you're going to put Anthony in, you've got to put Sancho in. Remember, Sancho's been here longer than Anthony. Two and a half years we chased him for a year, £73 million, maybe a little bit more, but let's say £73 million. 58 appearances, 9 goals. Doesn't sound terrible, but Carabao Cup winner came on for the last 7 minutes in the final, back at Dortmund on loan. As a deal, he could come back and reignite his Manchester United career. Who knows what could happen in the future. But what I would say about this is that it's... It, again, I, I had to put it in because it's a deal. It's a deal, isn't it? And also, he's just spent the last three months not playing, refusing to play, not playing, who knows? We've just paid him probably four and a half million pounds over the last three months for doing nothing. So as a transfer, you've got to take everything to ac in account. The three months he missed last season, forget that. That's That's you know, absolutely fine. Everybody was fine with that. It wasn't, you know, we don't know the true story behind it, but we, you know, you can put two and two together and the club was absolutely right to support him. And I think everybody did support him on that. But this season, to miss three months because of a fallout, terrible. Um, the return on the investment, terrible. The inconsistency on the pitch, not good enough. I think back about the times he's not tracked back, etc. It's just not worked out. And the big, big problem I have with this transfer, because we're talking about transfers, we're not talking about the players. I'm not saying Jaden Sancho's a bad player. I'm not saying Anthony's a bad player. We're talking about the transfer deal. This is what we're exposing here. The fact that we tried to get him one summer, didn't get him, and then went for him again, and did ignored all the warning signs about turning up for training late and everything like that, is again just another, it was an avoidable thing. It was avoidable. Who else was trying to sign Jaden Sancho when we were trying to sign him over both summers? I don't think anybody was. Maybe be, maybe for the reasons we shouldn't have done it. But again, a bad deal. Um, other contenders, I think it would be wrong not to mention Memphis Depay. Uh, all right, it was 30 million quid, but he came with a lot of buzz. It didn't work out. I wanted to mention Memphis in, 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 in tandem with Jaden because, again, I think that different manager, same recruitment. Did we do the checks around suitability to play for Manchester United, personality? Again, we didn't. And again, it backfired badly. And I think these things have to be a consideration as well. Um, in at number two, it, look, uh, look, in at number two, I'll tell you who's in at number two first. Can't wait to read a lot of yours, but in at number two for me, um, might be a bit controversial if I'm being fair, but uh, Paul Pogba in at number two for me. Actually, 154 appearances, 29 goals, Europa League winner, Carabao Cup winner, both in the same season. Pogba had signs and moments of brilliance. And I was always a fan of Pogba. Um, £89 million signing. I was always a big fan of Paul Pogba, um, as many people will know who watched the United stand for, for a longer period of time. I think Pogba, at his best, was unique in the sense that he was a player that Manchester United could sign, that, that signed. We never should have let him go to the Juventus when he was a kid. We signed him. One of the few players in football, in the midfield, that can get the ball and run past somebody. I think that this, I think Pogba wasted his talent. I think that we watch football now and it's all passed between the lines, you know, press as a team. Uh, Nobody takes anybody on. And I think there's an evolution of the game that Pogba would have suited perfectly. His ability to you know, skip past the player, his close ball control. It just didn't work out. And again, 
was there anything that could have been done around the personality there? Did we do everything that we needed to do? Injuries were obviously a factor. His agent and the people around him were obviously a factor. There was there were issues where Mino Riola was doing interviews, etc. Um, but the big reason I put Paul Pogba at number two was because we didn't maximise what we had. An amazing talent. And I don't know the full reasons why that was. Personality, people around him, you know, the club, player power, you know, uh, all sorts of stuff. But the big thing for me is £89 million from Juventus, free transfer back to Juventus. I mean, that's horrific. You've got to look at it in its entirety. And yeah, he won a Carabao Cup. He won a Europa League in that first season and then was rumoured to be part of the movement that tried to get rid of Mourinho and did. Um, player power. The advent of player power happened with Pogba. Not him on his own, but yeah, did. Um, so look, really, um, I don't like putting Pogba there, but I have uh, because I'm looking at, as I said, I'm looking at, I'm not really looking at the player. Obviously, none of these players lived up to their hype, but I'm looking at what we paid the player, what we got for the player when they left, how long they were here, how much we paid for them at the start, wages, personality, issues, player power, you know, all of that. So Pogba's my number two. Surprisingly, I think we'll see Di Maria in a lot of people's top five. He doesn't make my top five. Di Maria is not in my top five. The reason I haven't put Di Maria in the top five is it was a disaster of a signing, but it was a quick recovery. We spent £60 million on a player we never should have bought. He didn't want, he didn't want to come to Manchester. He slagged Manchester off, but there were some positives, very glimpsed positives. I remember the goal against Leicester. We made a mistake with Di Maria for £60 million and we got rid of him or he got rid of us within 12 months and we got £44 million back. So as much as it was a bad signing, as a transfer, we've made much worse financial decisions. We got we spent 60, we got 44 back in a year. So for me, yes, it was a mistake. But for whatever reason, we dealt with that mistake really, really quickly. So that's why he didn't make it number five into my top five. My number one, I'll be surprised if you haven't guessed it by this point. Um, look, you could have a completely different top five. You could have a different order to my top five. It's got to be Alexi Sanchez for me. Um, I just think that this signing was just abysmal. Absolutely abysmal. You know, the piano playing, the hype, how long it took. There was no real transfer fee is what people think. Well, there was. It was a swap deal with Mkhitaryan, which again was another failure. I mean, Kagawa could be in there. There's so many, so many transfers we haven't even mentioned. You could put Juan Mata in there because we never used him properly. And how, how much we paid for him um, is incredible. But Alexis Sanchez, highest paid player in Premier League history, 32 appearances, three goals, one nothing. And to me, that's worse than Sancho. That's worse than Pogba. That's worse than Maguire. We spent so much money on him, so much money on him, and he delivered nothing. And Ronaldo, I haven't mentioned. I know he's on the thumbnail, but I purposely kept him back because you know I'm a big fan of Ronaldo and I would never put him in the top five. But I wanted to keep Ronaldo back until Alexis Sanchez because we made Ronaldo the best paid player in Premier League history after Sanchez. So Ronaldo is the best paid player in Premier League history. And Man United did that. And whilst it didn't work, and whilst it could be in some people's top fives, he scored 18 goals in, an, in the worst ever Manchester United Premier League side. He scored 18 goals in a team where you get no service. So whatever you think about Ronaldo, in that first season, he somehow managed to deliver in, a, in an awful side. So I wouldn't put Ronaldo in there, although we did spend a lot of money on him. The reason Alexis Sanchez is in there is for the, completely the opposite. We made him the best paid player in Premier League history. And I don't know why we did that. I mean, yes, he was a good player at Arsenal. But for God's sake, who did we think we were buying? And I, 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 you know what? I don't get to go to Old Trafford as much as I used to. But I did get to see Sanchez twice at Old Trafford. And I was right, right close on the touchline. And he, I think he came on as a sub or he went off injured. I think it was against Palace, actually. And um, he was crap. He was crap. Like, to, you know, you see it on the telly, but like literally 
Somebody played him a ball. It might have been Pogba. And it was a good ball for him to run onto. And he just couldn't do it. He had no pace over two yards. Um, it was terrible. And again, best paid player in Premier League history at the time. Pitiful return. Uh, somehow we got rid of him, a, a massive loss, no doubt. And again, background checks. Background checks on personality, background checks on injury. To me, Alexis Sanchez, without a doubt, is the worst signing of the last 10 years. But I await your top five in the comments. Have I missed anybody out? I'm sure I have. I mean, look, there's been so many. There has been so many that um, some might say, I mean, I'm trying to think that, that there are loads and look, Fellaini, yeah, Fellaini. Buying Fellaini for eight million more than we should have paid for him two weeks before and letting the the, the, the fee rise because we delayed it. Um, there are so many, but that's my top five. Get in the comments. I can't wait. Smash a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe and join the members club if you want to by scanning the QR code. I'll speak to you on the next one. Uh, I'm back in the morning. Take care.